All right, this morning we are scrambling. We have that live stream up of the camels at the water point North Packhorse. They detected this morning at 4.40 a.m. They're still there. It is 6.27. We spent a bit of time messing around getting a bit of other stuff ready because we've actually also got a water point that we're going to fix while we're up there. No, it doesn't. You can plug it into the back or anyway. in the rear. So we're loading up in the Savannah, uh, in the Ventura, and we've got two rifles. Jasmine and Dad are with me, so we're going to go see how we go. And today I've got my little chest rig on, so I don't have to fumble in pockets for magazines. Right, let's go fly. And we still have some water in the stock tank. Did you leave it running overnight? No, we just turned it on again this morning. I meant to turn it on about 2 o'clock. Oh, I forgot to check the power plant. You know, when the power plant was going, I was going to turn it on. And I got up and I went, oh, if it's too early, it'll go off. Uh, yeah, what it, the problem is, is the power plant potentially will just shut down today. Right, for... Oh, like, as in it just will fuck up, because... I didn't reset. You have to manually reset it now every time it shuts down. Right, okay. Well, we shouldn't be going a stupid no, amount no. of time, Jack. No, no, it's okay. That's not going to... No, and it shut down last night, or I am this morning. Yep. Um, and the other clicked in. Well, and the solar should be pumping yep. some in today, so it's not going to... Um, yep, and the boys, I didn't ask them if they turned their air conditioners off, but I just took it, they would have. So yep. we need to double check that. Yep. So TMP fish, we've run that through. One stage of flat. Are we all good? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so that's recording. I it's believe so, yeah. Are you getting audio levels down the bottom? You are. Good. Alright, so we should be able to swing around. Okay, so we're flying out now. And the Ventura, so we just had that little brief on us yeah, loading up, getting ready to go. Dad is now showing how well he is over the, where that creek is, Dad, north of Packle. This one here. Yeah. So uh, we just take our pointer, info, direct to, activate. Roger. So we've got a bearing of zero four. Zero, and we're tracking out on 056 at the moment. We'll pick on Courtney as a good marker for us. And we're now established. We're going to go on autopilot so you can get the rest of your gear sorted. So we go alt, and got to have heading. So heading's now on heading, and and autopilot's on. So now we, I can help you out. Uh, strenuous workload here today. <laughs> So, like I said earlier, we've got two jobs today. We've got the camels that we're seeing this morning, kindly noted by Uncle Patrick, who's on our camp feed. And then we put it up as a live stream so everyone can have a look at the camels and, you know, observe them. Now, hopefully, we have the feed get shut down before we get cancelled. Um, well, is there any way we could talk uh, talk it through live at the same time? No, we can't have any guns in a live stream. No shooting whatsoever. No, not even allowed to have them on your hip. Uh, uh, it goes against community standards. Yeah, even transporting a firearm, we yep. get hit. That's where we've been hit for it. This one was having a live stream where a shot firearm was showing. Right. And then one where they thought that uh, we were torturing camels because they were screaming before we shot them. Now, the camels make that noise, even when they're not hurt, and we've got you know, a lot of video of that now, but sometimes the algorithm or the computers don't understand that. So, we are on our way out to North Packhorse now, and we're just gonna go through how we're going to uh, approach these. We're gonna go for the long airstrip. Yeah, just before we get to there, um, I think people should know that it's a Sunday morning. We were looking forward to a day off. We've been going for seven days straight, mustering cattle. And uh, yeah, the, the start of the week was nice and cool, but we knew we were running into heat, which we did, and we finished up yesterday at 45. 
and so we were a bit tired and they're looking forward to a break. But if we don't follow up on these that have got the potential to get in and knock that yard, then all those cattle will be thirsty for a couple of days until the water catches up again. So this is not a pleasure flight by any means. No, and this is a set of yards where camels had crushed the panel to get into the yards. Now you weren't with us when we did North Pack Horse, yeah. but um, the panel, and we've got a video with Danny and I uh, tidying up some camels. Um, yeah, no, the camel had actually just crushed the panel to get into the yards. Didn't use the inner or out gates, so yeah. they, they destroy it, and then it took the water point two days to catch up from one bull camel being in there. Yeah. And this is 30 of them. Yeah. So we've got the lovely scenery. Uh, today we are rocking, well, we've got a chest rig. I've got my earplugs in. Jasmine will be using the contacts so she can hear. And Dad will be able to run with a camera behind. And, and the reason I've got the camera, everyone, is because I just don't want to be out shot. <laughs> Tim, you can outshoot me, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not in it for the competition. Well, he'll be able to carry extra magazines or ammo for Jess. I can be a pack horse, pack horse as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 North pack horse. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've got the speed line, which is really good for Jasmine. Um, at the moment, she hasn't got it quite set up just for her because the, um, she's still getting used to that scope. And I've got my NPR pump action. And in Western Australia, the, we aren't allowed to have any semi-automatic centerfire rifles because it's been deemed that there's no genuine need for them here. And so we're using the best tools that we can have. And what were you doing? Uh, I should have bought the uh, revolver because we're going into the yard, so we are allowed to have that in the yards. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, all good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. We're allowed to have a revolver for self-defence out here with wild animals, but we aren't allowed to have a semi-automatic to make sure that we can take out the group very quickly. So we're using what we can, and look, there's positives and negatives to both rifles. At the moment, the speed line is limited to really four or five rounds, and that's not a legal thing. That's just the reliability of magazines. And then with the... NPR, well, I'm using a pump action rifle, so I have to change my position each, each shot. So it, it's very good though, it cycles well, it's clean, both rifles are oiled up. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to them. Yeah, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to have a look where they are first or just get on the ground and then get into them? Oh. And, and have we got any mechanism of turning off the uh, the camera? The camera? Yes. Yeah, Louise, we do. Louise has her cue. As soon as she sees one of us step into the vision of the camera, she's turning it off. Yeah, what I can do is I'll just go up to it and I'll just pull the feed. Yeah, uh, unless you want to get started on. Just can you be behind the camera? Yeah, you can. I can be behind the camera, but we're not allowed to have gunshots. Even gunshots will Nothing. get us banned. Uh, uh, that'll pick it up? Yep. yep. Pick it up, mute it. It's currently got music playing over the, the feed. Right. I thought about it. Um, it is crazy that we've got to, anyway. But we know generally what the view is, so any that are outside of that we can manage yep. first. Yep. But then the ones that are inside the feed next to the yards, we have to just turn and give Louise a thumbs up and then she'll... No, that's right, I've got it. Then she'll shut down the feed. Yeah, or I just go to the camera and I pull the feed. Yeah, it doesn't take long for me to pull that feed. I've got my Leatherman, I just open well, the box. If I take your rifle while you're doing that... You're going to get I'll, started. I'll, 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 I'll clean them up, then you just have to plug it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we could always do that. That's a no, good no, pass. No, no. With, with my hand. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, with a semi-automatic, you're lethal, Dad. <laughs> I know you <Yeah>. are. <laughs> um, the... The feed, what we can do is I'll just run up, I'll kill the feed, and then we can get started. And then yep. what we'll do is once we've finished with it, we can plug the feed back in, and the network will be back up. Have you got enough wind back there, Jasmine? Uh, more wouldn't hurt. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We're sitting up here like King Farouk with the, everything's tuned for us. Do you want to uh, have a bit of a gander around the 
countryside for the people? Yeah, so we'll, we're at 84% battery, we've got plenty. We're flying over Lake Carnegie Nature Reserve at the moment, or Lake Carnegie Indigenous Protection Area. So this is a wetland of importance. It's home to the night parrot, which is a very endangered species. It's also um, home to some feral camels, and we are legally obliged to make sure that we stop the camels from getting into there, which is actually for government purposes, but it's not deemed enough anyway. Um, In this area here is where I had a mob of about 60 horses one day, and we took them up, there was a bit of water in the lake and around it. It used to be a daily event to see the horses out on this country, and it's real easy to pick horses up from the air because you can look out uh, to what you'd say was the halfway to the horizon and you just pick a cloud of dust up because they'd hear the planes and they'd be off and you just pick the dust. Whereas with camel, they don't pick the dust, so they're very soft on the ground on their you know, destruction with their hoofs or with their pads, you know, the horses, the pads with the camel. And uh, ditto with the donkey. Uh, the donkey, Jasmine and I chased out at uh, uh, Boundary. No, Desert Pine. They were hard work. Yeah. They, we were ducking and dodging because what they do is they run a bit and then pull up underneath a tree. And with a plane you can't spin around quite as quick. So you'd lose them and you'd be back on them and it was, it's not easy spotting uh, for donkey. Uh, the easiest is horse, but they're at a gallop, so your real problem there is you really need to be working in conjunction with a helicopter. That, that's, that's the pick of it. You know, you could spot them up and then hold your mob and the helicopter comes over, tidies up, and then you both go off looking again. And then when you find something, the heli, you call the heli in and he comes and bombs them up. Um, and then camels are easy in the plane? Uh, camels are uh, easy, you know, next. In, if you get the mob, the only trouble is once you get in certain types of country and where the sun is, it, surprisingly enough you can lose, lose them for a bit and they travel a lot quicker than what you think. Um, one mob we had down on the lake, uh, they went about 15 k's while we were waiting for the ground crew to catch up and I thought they must have cut inland but they were following the lake right around and uh, we caught up to them, a bit. well yeah we did catch up to them and uh, they were still going at the same speed but I left them at and I thought they'd just you know gallop on for a bit then stop but they kept galloping the whole time. So uh, this, is, this is pretty country here. Yeah. Shame to see it. Uh, uh, damaged by horses or camel. Now the camels today, like we've already said, are a necessity. They're threatening the water source and that means that our livestock are at risk. If we, well, we know there's places where there are camels wandering around that aren't a priority for us because again, it is high temperatures. It's not pleasant. It's currently 33 degrees outside and we are 500 AGL. Yep. And it is 6.45 a.m. Yeah, yeah, we're expecting, uh, there's a forecast of 42 here for today, but we know that it's going to go higher than that. So, again, we've got that weather flow tempest for people to be able to jump on and have a look at, see what our weather is doing at the time. And, yeah, we have started to move some of our content over to the video network Rumble because we keep getting... I reckon I've got the wrong... Yeah, you're on the wrong heading. Roll around. Yeah, I'll just go roll around a bit. Um, we've moved over to another video host because some of our content, as we have been discussing, we're getting stung for showing you the reality um, on on YouTube. So we're we're now on Rumble, and that is yeah, just it's still Jack out the back on Rumble. And we will still use YouTube. It's just that the YouTube is a filtered version of some of the content, predominantly the shooting. Yeah, usually like an episode on Rumble is about five to ten minutes more. That, that's our point over there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay, I'll bring around another ten degrees. That's the rehab lake, so the little one between yeah, us yeah, and so that's, Lancelot. That's going to be in through over this point over here. Correct. That's the clay, uh, you know, where the Hereford Bull usually hangs out. Yep. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, the Rumble videos are usually five to ten minutes longer. If not, they are just purely, like, there's not even a censored version we can put onto YouTube. So if you haven't checked it out, jump over there and have a look. We know that it's not for everyone that, you know, is subscribed to our channel to watch shooting, but it's part of our job and making sure that the message gets out there that camels are a problem. They do exist here in Australia. And it's it's just another challenge for us uh, to tackle out here. You know, we're working in a harsh environment and then we've also got... Um, feral animals and then you've got that political aspect of the rest of society not supporting or knowing what's going on out here. So we aim to create an informed viewer so that we can make sure that you continue to support farmers and where your food comes from. Right. And uh, I'd just like to add in there that uh, Jack is fifth generation and all, all generations have had livestock. And one thing that granddad and my granddad and dad instilled into us that we are not to be cruel with animals and that is to make sure that they're humanely dealt with and uh, you, you do, what's the term used now is clear fell, but you don't leave any little ones to just perish, just just die uh, from starvation or thirst, you, you clean the lot up and uh, it's not pleasant some of this work, uh, especially once you've been raising them all the way through. Okay, we're getting to the serious end now, we just got pulled in on the, you got the strip over here? I see the airstrip and the tank. Yep, so we're just going to roll in, I don't mind if you have a I'm going to uh, get her down as slow as I can now. Do you want to pull up and then walk around? So I'll get her on the ground and stop. Uh, but I've got to wait a minute or two because this thing's turbocharged. OK. Bumps, brakes are good. Undercarriage is fixed. Uh, mixture. Sorry, you're going for the short, short strip. Maybe you want to use the long strip? OK. Mixture. Fuel. Fuel. We've got both tanks on. Fuel. Patches and harnesses. Okay. Puff, pitch, undercarriage fixed. Flaps, we've got 60 knots. Have you got the camel? Still got targets. Okay, I'm going to try and bring it down short. So don't, don't worry if we look like we're landing in the... In the bush? No, in the short. I'm glad you guys can see stuff, because I can't. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've got some out to my right. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, we're clear, we're clear. Cows left. Still clear. Uh, what I did, uh, have you got ears? Um, Do you want ears? I've got some here for you. Yeah. Swap. You just throw it in there. So what I'll do, uh, the tank, camera, microphone, for Jasmine. Yeah. Have you got your mags? Okay. Out of the bag. Get okay. Jasmine's mags. Magazines are in the bag. We'll just get you to jump in front of the tank camera while I disable the thing. 
paid. You're up with them. Yep. Do you have your third mag? I have two magazines in my pockets. Dad's got one mag. Two. Pass me the camera. Yeah. So we've got a dual camera happening right now. Um, we just came down on the airstrip there. Dad's got his earplugs. Which way's that's facing you now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's the way. So have I got a mic on this thing if I talk yep, to it? Yeah, you've got a mic the whole way. Okay, so we're going to come up. We've got the wind. Oh, I've got ears. Yeah, yeah, that's all right, but I don't need to shout for this. No. So you can just see me miming over here. And uh, Jasmine's got her electric ears. Yeah, that's good. I've got a pair on the way. So we've got the wind coming in from the northwest at the moment, so we're coming up downwind on them, which has worked out really well. And uh, with a little bit of luck, we can cut through over here, through the bush, and get a nice and close so we can get right up onto them to uh, get easier shooting. You gonna go bush? No, you're right, just cut. You stay right with Jack, Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, sling would be... Give, no, give, no, it's okay. Give me your water bottle. Oh yeah, that you can have. Yeah. A sling would be great. You're right. So the country we're walking over is fairly rocky as you can see um, it's good cattle country it's got all different types of herbage over it and uh, it's uh, it's just difficult walking so i've got my leatherman if we come in on that blind side i'll be able to go to the tank well, we'll come in on the tank and then I'll just go and pull the feed. So if we get up and they're still standing nice and quiet, maybe we just take half a breath and get our breathing back down again, and then you can into them. Still okay, so just through here you can see the the tank, but there's a big mob of them there. Just through the bush we're getting a glimpse of them now. Do you want to cut more to the south? Or are you happy just to try and walk up on them? Because we're gonna go Straight across a tank. bit of a bit of open country there. Oh. Take them up on the tank then. Just walk up on them. Just go up on the tank, because we've got where that old turkey nest was. See, you got the one right through there, straight in. Yeah, yeah I've got them straight through there. Yeah, one out near the other black tanks walking out. Got him. Go on, Desmond, you kick it right up. Which shoulder do you go on, Jax? That one, he wants you on your left, on the left. Okay, they're moving quietly, honest. This is where normally we'd have the buggy and you can come in onto them. Don't cycle until we decide we're going to start. Okay, how close do you want to get? Uh, yeah, like 50 metres at the tank. The tank's a good firing position. And then what I can do is I can just jog up to the black tank. Okay, you've still got one right on the yards. So you work on the ones in front? Yeah, I'll work on the ones on the right. Yep. Jasmine, we've got two at the left, they're going to be yours. Okay, so take all the ones that are sitting down first. Right, a whole oh, group okay, let's... Shade. All right, and camera feed? Yep, yep. I'll get to the camera yep. feed. All right, I'm going to take... No, no, stay right with, with Jack, stay right with him to the start. Keep right in close, so then we look like one animal. So... I'd get into them. Sorry? No, well, it's up to you when you start, but... <sighs> Once they're out of the feed. Wait until they get in front of the tank. Do you want me to hold that while you turn it off? It's okay. I can hold it for you, I'm right with you. Yeah, as soon as Louise sees us, she'll turn it off. As well. 
So dad, jump in front of the water tank near where the tap is and just wave. You want me to walk out in? Just yeah, get right out between the, the windmill and the water tank. Yep. Don't run, don't run. Take your long shots first. Uh, here you go, out here to the right. To the right, to the right, get into that lot. Uh, 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 the shoulder, Jasmine, just in the shoulder. Am I good to move? Good to move. Jasmine, moving. Make it zoom. Straight on your nose, Jack. 12 o'clock. Am I all right, right to just go? go? Yeah, go. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. They've pulled up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Jasmine, this one's yours. Don't run, Jasmine. Just come along. We're staying back behind, Jack. You're free to shoot. Yeah, you know, you're right, just walk into your right, you can walk in. Just so there's no chance we're putting anything in his direction. Straight through his lip, straight through his lip if he's facing you. Okay, whack one into it. If you can't get an easy shot on it, just put it in its shoulder. Okay. Had a little one here too? Yeah, 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 just put... I'd whack it, and it's up here, but I'd just whack it in its shoulder. Magazine. This is the hard bit for all of us. Uh, we'd love to be using these for meat, and uh, I defy anyone to uh, want to put an animal down like that, but you just can't leave them. Um, yeah, yeah, anyway. Okay, yep, just come in. You can come right in. Yeah, okay, now see see the, the base of his nose, see where his, his nostrils are. If he faces you, just straight through the middle of that. That's got him. They're, they're gone. They're, they're, they're just going through the throws. When we come back, we'll have a look at... Uh, so, sorry? Oh, yeah, you've got it. I'm not going to... Right, okay, that's three four five six 
seven. Are you right, Jasmine? Yep. Eight. <laughs> yeah, I've got 40 rounds in the pocket. Yeah. I think I said eight and five, this is nine. How silly is it? Well, I don't know how it's going to sound, but I prefer coming in behind and think tidying up the, the secondary part. Yep. It's um, physically easier, mentally maybe not so much, physically easier. Yeah, what we should do is get that magnum take all the uh, uh, sights off it and just have that as a, a follow through because then you can just go whack 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 yeah you know, it's a lot lighter to carry this, yeah. easier on the ears and uh, so I said that's nine that's very fun of us there you stop uh, you can't shoot from here because Jack's oh, out in front I was readjusting the way I'm carrying it. Yeah, so let's cut, cut to the right here. I can't see Jack from that the bed you are. No, but if we get around to the right, we'll... And just put it in its shoulder. Yeah. It's, uh... Jack and I often discuss where to shoot them. And, um, uh... So what did I say? Well, this is 10? I think so. There's 11 out yeah. there. That's the boss man over there. They're all watching him. If he gets spooked, yeah, he's looking at me now. See, the whole mob looks at me. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? I'm just gonna say, I'm here to ruin your day. Steady, boy, steady. Magazine. That button is so awkward for me. That's to pull the magazine out? Yeah. No, not to pull the magazine out. What's it do? Something else. Magazine out is on the other side. That little one? Oh, yeah. That one's... Must be holding the, the, the thing forward. Yeah, that's what it is. It's so awkward. God, he's quick. He's so fast on his feet. Amazing. One good thing about it is that we've got them all away from the points. There's got more out here. Yes, yeah, no, they're all away from the water. So there's no chance of them deterring other, deterring cattle from drinking. Yeah, and they don't stink for us. Yes, they don't stink for us. I was saying it in a nicer way. <laughs> Deter the cattle from drinking. I've got the magazine. All right, I've got one ahead here that we need, need to. to sort out. Yes. Uh, Can out. you just hold that for a yes. second? Four to go. This, these rubber belts, they're good. But once they, once your dacks creep down, they expand some more so they can creep down. <laughs> oh, so they can keep creeping down. Yeah. <sighs> I still do not have Jack's visual. No, nah, as long as we know he was out there. Yes. So as long as we go on the other side of the camel. And shoot back this way, we're safe. 
We're okay. It's 13. 13, 14, 13. I can see another one fight straight out for a 12, but that's all the way down. Yeah, we know Jack is out ahead of us, so we're going to round around and go behind this. Right, so I've got one there. We've got, what's that? 14 or 15. 16 is one behind it. Okay. Some people have asked why we wear high vis. I see. Um, but so in a situation like this, we get no, well, we minimize the chance of not being seen. You've got the forward shooter. Uh, he knows where we're behind him, following along. That should be the last of them. <sighs> Took three in the face, mate. Sorry about that. After you, I'm going to circle out there and look for your other mates. No prints. The wind's coming from the north, so I'll cut to the north. Have a glance out into the belt. I tell you what, even though you hate the idea of a pump action through a white, it goes well. Right, so that's them under control for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to track with my watch the distance back. I'll launch that in a second. But one thing's for sure, this isn't as easy as a computer game as many of you seem to think. We're looking at moving targets, moving positions. You're not looking at static targets. You're not looking at something that moves evenly or consistently, like on a range. These are funky animals, and we are dropping them. So... Yeah, it's a bit of effort. Time to track how far I've come. Check out my heart rate as well. 113. Gosh, I'd say that's not bad. Let's go. See how far we go. So, yeah, using a Garmin Phoenix 6X. Pretty awesome. If I could somehow download the activity and give you the heart rate as I'm moving and shooting would be pretty interesting. Gloves? Yeah. Picatinny rail on a pump action. You can uh, cut yourself up pretty badly with that. So I wear the gloves to protect my hands so I can keep shooting. This also gets quite hot. The environment was sitting at already 34 and a half degrees. 
So everything you touch gets warm. So, yeah, that's why I wear gloves. They're from a hardware store. They fit well. All right, I was close to him. Max out. Clear. Safe. So you want another one of these? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's heaps better. How many do you get? All yeah. out of them. Yeah, yeah coming no, back this way. Did you count it back? Oh, uh, I think I'm up to seven. We're 20 here. So three got away. Or I haven't found them. Because right. I can tell you, <laughs> there's a whole ridge line over there of dead ones. Yeah. yeah. Like at the end, you heard the rapid just a doo 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 empty the mag. I just went every target yeah. and they were all fucked. Yeah, we've done all that. Right. Okay, stand in, have a rest for a second. Oh, I'm this happy to keep on? going to water. Yeah. It just continuously turn it on, turns off, turn it on, turns off. Yeah, no, nah, GoPro's a shit house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, because it's on my shoulders, it's fine. Yep. <laughs> so, we were because your camera's recording, we can get back to our... There was another thing that my dad was adamant for us, is that we never, never had a bullet up the spout and uh, you had your bolt open and you always had it either pointed skyward or groundward um, that way it was unlikely to get someone if it was an accidental discharge it's unlikely for a firearm to load itself and shoot someone so if you don't load it it can't happen so it doesn't matter whether you're doing this for recreation, um, target shooting, anything, you go to a rifle range and get there. They're, as they should be very stringent on how you handle the firearm. And they're firearms, they're not weapons. Uh, they're tools. They're, they're, they're tools. I was allowed to take a rifle out when I was 10 years old. After school we'd get home and we'd be given three bullets and the, it was a tube, tube rifle and the tube was taken out so you had to load it each time you wanted to shoot. And we were shooting parrots, we're getting into the, into the orchard. So it has been for a long time uh, looking after what we have. You are so fast. <laughs> Camera doesn't make it look like it. <laughs> By the time I did my first, emptied the first magazine, it was changing to the second, which one of the bullets came forward in and it was stuck in my pocket. I couldn't get the bloody thing out of my pocket. You were already out of my sight and gone. Yeah. You're clear? Yeah, good. Yeah. What did we say? 27? 28. I don't know, to be honest, I'd have to look at the um, video. But okay, we had 20 up. Up to where we caught up with you. Cactus, yeah, sorry. I thought you were asking if I was cactus.
1.4 k's. Uh, 1.14, sorry. Now, third magazine for the speed line is on the tank next to the ammo bag. Okay, good. Thanks, Bastion. <laughs> The distance was 1.64 kilometres. Now that was pretty much a straight line walking back, so I did a reasonable amount weaving through the bush. We uh, think that it's a bit over 32, 33 camels that we dropped there. They're all dead, so that's a good effort. And yeah, a bit of heart rate work there. You know, peaking out at around 120, so going to a K. That's just, that's just practice and, I don't know, fitness. Sounds like I'm puffing, but, you know. I, uh, I've got a bit of distance, a bit of heat, and I'm manually pumping the rifle. I don't have a gas system that cycles it for me. So, we're back to the plane, and then we're going to fly up and fix another water point. We will, uh, yeah, keep going. Comes on. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay, TMP fish is the call. Trim. Just stand. In the middle. Mixture. Fix. Primer is on. Flaps, one stage. Instruments are set and checked. Hatches, controls, hatches and harnesses. My belt's good, my belt's good. My belt is on. Crocs are good for this, you can feel with them. That's what I flew the other day with. Okay, I'm going to roll around and keep rolling. One stage flaps, good. One stage of flat. Better. Air speed forty five. Um, if we do a circuit back over the line of attack that we took. Yep, just let me get it settled down. Yeah, no, no, just wraps up. 22 litres. And we're on 32. And okay, burning 22 litres. Oil, 3.5. Oil temp, 85. Coolant, 89. EGT, 864. Fuel bar, 301. Clean up, flaps up, wheels up, power settings. Oh, you want to go? Oh, it's just a... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I was... That was just a call back onto myself. Alright, I'm just going to do a quick air tally. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12. 12. 13. 13, stop, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 
been funny if Mum didn't kill the stream. It will have just been a black screen and music for, you know, 26 minutes or something. Yeah. And then it comes back and we're all sitting there having a drink. Yeah. In the tank. So I don't know how when you stopped watching the live stream, Tim, but we had someone go, oh. It was Adam, the bloke who sent us the shirts. Yeah. Going, oh. You know, it looks like you could get up there, Jasmine, and get behind those camels with the M with the NPR. And I was like, no, 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 it's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the kids have missed their parents over the last six days. It's time for me to have a rest and spend some time with the kids. And then Louis, Louise walks in the door. <laughs> Goes, oh, you're going, aren't you? He, um, he was impressed with how well the shirts turned out that he made. That's good. And now we've already got people saying, yeah, we want, we want those shirts. Yeah, we've had a few people asking for them. Uh, come on, you can send the message. Well, let's send it. Should go past like yeah, that? Yeah, we'll, but I just need a... Um, loiter for a moment. Yeah, give me a second. Do you want me just to pivot over the top? Uh, it's getting there. Messages have gone. Uh, come on. It, all I got was all the rumble notifications. As long as the clear downs one goes through, we're fine. Yeah, it's it's loaded to launch. Dang, if I just hang on up this. No, 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 you're okay. Oh, I got the damn wind up and ginger now. No, 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 it's fine. Hang on. Hang on. There we go, message is out. Alright, we're sent, we're all good. How close is the airstrip? Let me know when the eagle has landed. Heard a few rapid shots and they scattered. So <laughs> obviously the, uh, <laughs> the feed didn't kill quick enough. <laughs> There's a cattle tent here. Yeah. yeah got them. Sometimes you're better off having your phone set to join the the guest network because at home the guest network is 2.4 gigahertz yeah which gives it better range out here our phones try to join and they're looking for the 5 gigahertz uh, but out here it's all 2.4 gigahertz okay this is not the altitude you should use autopilot or, autopilot at problem is, is you'd normally want to do something else, you're looking at doing something else. Yeah. I find when I use autopilot in this, I look at the screen a lot more, because I'm paranoid about it, it not being, after a while you lose that paranoia, <laughs> then you just got to make sure you bring it back, <laughs> that uh, you're not looking at your uh, phone and dozing off. Well, so, a couple of things. The Ventura's were running the Garmin T3X touchscreen. Yeah. We've also got the Garmin Autopilot and we've got our Garmin comps. And the cool thing is that there is an integration to our mobile phones where we can load up our flight plans and weather and then put it into the plane itself. Yeah. But we also have it on our watches where we have the ability to, um, well, on this watch to yeah. integrate and join it in. Although mine's not quite the model that will tie straight into the aircraft. Mine does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mine, yeah. mine's oh, 100%. Yours is really good. It's just easy. It's uh, All I gotta do is just touch the end of my finger and it puts it straight through. <laughs> maybe I should, uh, maybe we should get you a watch, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Jack. His watch is a lot cheaper than the one that you want. Yeah, see, this one, this yeah. one is just... It would have actually been a great watch for um, Uncle Will, that one that I found. Well, you can just fold the little wings out and hop on. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he used, when the Garmin D2 pilot watch came out, he sent it through to us. Yeah. And he said, oh, these would be really nice, but they're super expensive. Now they've sort of stopped making them, and they've just got a model up on this, and it's got everything in it. Just, you know, here's, if we're going to make a top-of-the-line watch, here it is. I'll just turn the auto off. Yep. We're not going to have any camels on the airstrip today? Oh, I don't know. I'll just open the door and ask them politely to leave. Yeah. And, uh, I had two camel and two cows. I, I had to 
do a sweep first. So our downwind checks are bumps, brakes, undercarriage is fixed, mixture fixed, primer, primer is on. Now there's a debate about the primer, whether leave it on all the time or not. I do notice that uh, it will drop its fuel off sometimes, so uh, brakes, undercarriage, mixture, fuel, it's... Uh, and hatches and harnesses. All flat. Amy's out there? Yeah, Amy. That's shush. No, you're right. You're right. Just watch the front. The cow's what we're looking for. I'll go straight in. A bit quick. What have I got? You're at 60. Too quick. You got a sand arrestor at the end? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, we're right. I'm not hard on the brakes yet. Okay, if I made a door. Hang on, just wait, we'll get out of this dust. Okay, you can do a door if you want it. Uh, yeah, we touched down somewhere around um, 50. 50? A bit over 50, yeah. yeah. It's not quite your usual 45 floating. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Can't float this one in at that? Well, we're, we're heavy. Yeah. Hey. We're, we've got over half tanks. <laughs> yeah. And the gear we've got on board. You know, what's your rifles weigh? Uh, three and a half kilos each. Yep. So you got seven kilos there, plus the ammunition. Yep. Plus water. As we were coming in, I was sitting... Yeah, there we are. You're right. I was, you know, that's where I tied her up the other day with that wind. Yeah, coming in and we're going for our downward approach. Yeah. I always double check my fuels. Yep. And I was like, oh yeah, which tank are we on? And I was like, oh no, we, we can't select the tank on this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. That's, they're going to get a real drumming over that. Ah, uh, comms off. So, we literally just landed at Bullock. We were just taking off our headsets and unbuckling our seatbelts. And I happened to look up and we saw about 15 camel run across the top of the road up there. So Jack was the quickest to bail out and he already had his magazines loaded and he's already gone and Tim just took the speed line, um, a packet of ammo and two magazines and he's gone and I was still buckled with cameras all over my laps. So we will see what we get out of this mob. All right, so what I'll try and do for you is I'll try and show you why a hive is, is quite handy out here. Because while the ground is orange, the shrubbery is quite brown and green, or, you know, khaki coloured. So you don't want to be wearing those colours. You want, <coughs> excuse me, you want to wear the bright colours. Like, all right, Tim's 150 metres in front of me with an orange shirt on and I can see him through some scrub. If he was wearing green, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have as much, um, visibility on him and he's through this thicket here and I can see him with his orange shirt on. So we will see how close I can get up behind them and if I can get any action on camera. So interestingly we did a circuit around this water point before we landed to check to make sure the airstrip was clear. And it's not until we have landed that this mob became visible. So they must have been sitting under a tree. Out of our sight and then we've landed and we've just stopped the plane. And I was changing batteries in cameras when they run across. 
Right, I can see Jack and Tim in front of me now. So they're both wearing high vis. And they are quite visible. Unlike if they were wearing dull colours. They were too quick for you? Yeah, they were in transit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, drop them. Oh. Just take them back in your bag. <laughs> About 15? Uh, I only saw seven or so. Seven. I saw some run past. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Empty. Empty. Correct. Empty. Okay, so just to really show that the camels are everywhere. It was just on landing and then shut down that Jasmine called out, you know, 12 o'clock camels. So they were just running across the other side of the end of the airstrip, so not on the airstrip. I reckon there was seven, Jasmine thought there was 15 and Dad saw camels. Uh, we were out and we were on the move to them pretty quickly. We didn't see them on our flyover. They are very well camouflaged. I said I reckon they're probably keeping up on the retreat and we've flown over, woken them, them up and then they're on the trot. Yeah, so they weren't slowing down. We pushed through the, uh, we pushed through the shrub line and uh, that was about 300 metres of a jog. Enough room for another airstrip and they were nowhere to be seen. But we saw the cattle. And as we were coming in on landing, we saw some emus over at the clay pen. So we're up here at Bloodwood Pool and at Bloodwood Bore, which we are going to put a new solar charge controller in just to get it up and running because when dad flew in yesterday, it looked like the solar charge controller had died and wasn't providing any charge to the battery. And the pump had fried as well. Now I forgot to bring my new multimeter but we will be okay because we've got the Bluetooth link in that ammo tin and we'll be able to plug into the other controller and see what's been happening to it for the last few hours. But our goal here is just to make sure that the battery that's there is charging and that we are pumping. We've got water in the trough and we will see how we are. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be coming up with a plan to drop a big water tank here and get Hopefully all three of these bores operational. We've got one bore here, which we were told don't bother with, but now we're at the stage where we think we might just have a go because a lot of bores here we've been told don't bother with. And then when we've got them operational, they're actually quite good. Um, well, I think it may- If they were over pumping them, because they would- uh, Oh, just let it run now. Just let it run. Yeah. Which is the downside of a windmill. Well, no, we actually came up with a, um, well, Tom, some older brother, Tom, he come, came up with a method to automatically turn a windmill out when your tank got full. Thing was that the amount of messing around that it was to get that going, we figured we might as well just go solar. And now with some of the lower supplies, we're whacking 24 hour power on them and they're going really well. And then on these ultra low supplies or what we believe are ultra low supplies, we're putting these diaphragm pumps down and to be fair to the uh, old timers, there were about three or four methods about 50 years ago about how to make them turn out. One was you had your tank close by with the float on it, and as the float came up, it pulled your mill out. There was also the pressure compensator on them, and I can't remember what the third one was. There were a number of them already, but why would you mess around? A, climbing up one of those things, and B, the cost of them now. Uh, the, these pumps, uh, we're, these new ones that we're putting down, uh, the diaphragm ones, I think top of the range was $500. So you can just about set up a pump with, with pressure control on it, sub $1,000.
We could probably melt down all the old brass pumps we've got and turn it into cartridges. Ah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna pop over here and see what we've got happening. It's good to see the old bloodwood is is still alive. It's um, it's actually in a really inconvenient spot for us in terms of when we're processing cattle. It's not quite big enough anymore to provide shade while we're working. It's on the south side as well, so it won't put any shade on us. But you just, you know, the boar's called bloodwood. Keep it going. Corkwood. Corkwood. So that there is the mill called the East Mill. We're checking it up and it's about 75 feet. So we will pull that up and investigate. Right, let's see what we've got now. You can see here, we've two holes through, three holes through, so you get a bit more of a pivot, and so it can't go over. Love the twill of the uh, cockatiels. Plugged in the Bluetooth dongle, logging in with it to check and see how we're going. That's charging the battery. So we can just walk away. That's good news. Yeah. <clears throat> so Dad's hooked the pump straight into the battery. <clears throat> and this here would typically go to the pump. So I'm going to unplug the pump. Pump is off. Now plug the pump into here. Now the pump is on, and we can look at the load, and it is drawing 31 watts, 2.4 amps, done and dusted. Okay, so good, good news is it is working. We do have water in the trough. It is 35 degrees Celsius at 8.44 a.m. Okay. So to walk through a little bit of bloodwood, this is the east mill and there's a bore under there, obviously. This is another bore that they drilled literally what, like five, six meters or something between the east mill and that bore. It's water divining and looking for fresh water. Yes. So obviously they've had a lot of, there's about four, four holes here or three holes here. Three. So they've had a lot of trouble in the past with trying to get a good supply here. So they just kept drilling in relatively the same spot. So we've got the east mill, this borehole, and then over there where the water tanks are is the west mill. So we've had the west mill and that bore pump uh, pumping into the tanks. Well, that's how we've had it set up for a really long time. And we haven't been trying using the east mill. Oh yeah, the strap holding the tank. Righto. A decent little leak. There's a lot of ants there, gentlemen. A lot of ants. Right. Reef it. Crank. Hang on. Here you go. Here you go. Start dancing your ants and plants. Okay, just bang, bang all over my back and are they on the outside? No. Let's keep going. Okay. Just bang, bang, bang. bang. This is pitch. dropped down to... Yeah, Jasmine, watch you. Yep. Yeah, that's dropped down to next to nothing now. So that's... We're happy with that. Right, we'll bring Cosmos up with us. <laughs> what did you do? I'm going to stop the ants from being a problem here. Oh, that's right. I think it's a really good idea. Because if you make them copulate, they could to be a problem. Alright. Where about are you, Jack? He's getting naked behind the camp behind the tank. <laughs> I know she did very you know, I think a rip of mine up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one can drink that. <laughs> oh, we would have you did just did ask for him. Okay, 
I have tried to. Yeah. yeah it's fine. You look down. There's water there. Yeah, there's water there, but this thing's stuck in there. Right. Now, if we get water and blast it down into it, and somehow or other suck it up so we could get that, so we were. Uh, right. Yeah, something. So, uh, I reckon pressure's not big enough. Well, we might be enough to just stir it up. You know, stir it enough to be able to move it up. Let's go to what we were playing and talk about it. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good Water idea. bottle and ammo tin. Yeah. Well, we know, we, we believe we can pull the other one. Well, right on. No, just. Thank you. Oh, you were complaining a minute ago that no one helped you. So now we overhelp you and you complain too. So 2021, we did a helicopter muster at these yards. It's very stressful. Um, because for two years we hadn't been able to muster up here because of the floods that in 2019 or early 2020, which is when Jack Hayes plane crash, um, there was just so much water that we weren't able to muster for, for two years. So we decided to do a helicopter. So we put in all of these posts here and we put in a fence. So the helicopter brought the cattle in which is, well, this is actually, the, it was an airstrip or is an airstrip. So the helicopter brought all the cattle in on the airstrip and pushed them down here and it funneled them into the yards at the end there. So we had the fence going for this part and then we had the portable panels and the wing that we folded them in when they got close enough that we were able to do so. It was a separate pen and we had three, four buggies invited Brendan Carew from Carnegie Station, who's the manager up at Carnegie Station, to come down because this is relatively close to the boundary. And traditionally, it's the neighbourly thing to do. When you're mustering close to the boundary, you invite them when they're with a helicopter. When they're mustering close to the boundary, they invite us. It's the neighbourly thing to do. So Brendan came down and gave us a hand. And he was the, let's call him the veteran of the, of the helicopter muster. And we were the rookies. However, his car did break down. <laughs> um, yeah, we pulled huge, huge numbers uh, from that muscle because it had been two years. And we haven't mustered this point again since because again... Yeah, yeah. I no, did. You, yeah, did. you did, sorry. With Rigby. No, Tim did it by himself in January this year. I took two decks off. Yes, my apologies, you did, yes. Because again, with these boards being as they are, water has been an issue. And it became a very big issue in January. So Tim pulled two decks off by himself in January. And if you want to go back further, before the muster with the helicopters, the year before that uh, was drought, severe drought. And Jack was carting water here every second day. Hey, um, day, day. Yeah. Look at it. Just I most of the snow's coming in yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's hot, it's dry. And you the heat is surviving out here. Another little one over there. Yeah. You just go wow. Oh, yeah, so yeah, a year before we did the helicopter muster, Jack was carting water here in forty five plus degree heat every single day. The walls couldn't keep up. Yeah, so now the hope is with our better technology, um, we will get the three balls going and we won't have as much trouble here anymore. Fingers crossed. Okay, TMP fish. I didn't clean up because we got distracted, so make sure you do your TMP fish. Mixture. Primer. Primer. Fuel. Fuel. Flaps. One stage flaps. Instrument. Yep, I've got one stage on. Instrument. Patches and harnesses. Belted. Belted. Okay. Temp's good. Toes on. I'm clear. Okay. Good to go. I'm not going to open it right up to it near those trees. 
39, 40, 45, 50, clear. Can't really beat that short field performance with three people on board. <laughs> you were comfortable enough with that? Yeah, yeah, it says if you weren't, go for a fly with Will in the 177. Oh, yeah, no, that's. <laughs> you're chasing the horizon in that. No, it's just, I'm not, yet yeah, in that seat. Yep, yeah, gonna do that. I just haven't got the hours in these things. For future reference, Jack, looking out this back window here, you don't seem to get, at least on this side at the moment, a lot of the sun glare on the window. I think because it's got enough shade from the wing. Oh, yeah, for the film. Yeah, yeah. so you, you could somehow mount the camera. Out the back. Looking out this back window. It's really quite a nice view. Well, and the um, windows are cleaner in this than the... So, yeah, they are, and then the people who like it as a bearing, you do have the strut of the wing in the shot as well. Yeah. Back it down the centre of the strip. Eyes down the end of it. Flaps up. Good for door? Yeah, you can take a door. Keys under the. It's okay. This plane. Yeah, no, we'll load everything into the car. Do you want to leave all of that here, Jasmine? Just take your hat and go. No, no, it's okay. I just, I'm here. Yeah. Go there. We are there. Drill. Yep. From yesterday, so we'll get all our stuff back together. And. Next to a pump, so when it's out of that one, that's the water tank down to filled up. Is that your? That's all the comm stuff. Right, we've got nothing else, have we? Nothing else. Okay, well, uh, that was, like Dad said, a successful little operation in more ways than one. We got the camels, they're away from the water, so we're not stressed about that. And we've got bloodwood up and functioning as well as we can for now, which means it's getting water in, so we're happy with that. And we're going to plan for it as well to get the other two going, which is really important. Get them going, then we can all relax a bit. Right, so, yep, that's us for the day and all the bloody wind. So. Right, so, yep, success all the way around. And we've got the plan for those other water points as we're just covering off on them, or the plan for the other bores there to get them going. So it's going to be an early start tomorrow. And yeah, we're just going to hibernate and hide from the heat now. So now it's video editing time. Video editing time. We'll we'll have this one up today because we've teased everyone with that. So <laughs> yeah. we will have this up. Really likely on Rumble. Yeah, this will be on Rumble. It's not water point stuff can be on YouTube. Yeah, but... just work the whole episode. Although we'll... I'll check it. We'll check it. But we'll see if it's the shoot. Will definitely be on it. Well, it could be on YouTube. Yeah. See how we go. Yeah.
but yes, we very well be up within five hours. Well, and the thing is, if we're doing it on Rumble, we just do it in 1080. Yeah. And see how we go with that, and then we might also put it on YouTube in a different resolution. Let's go. Let's go see the kids, have some food, some electrolytes, recover. My watch reckons it's going to take me 21 hours to recover from that little effort, but we don't have 21 hours to spare. We've got jobs to do and the station to run.